What's good, world? It's your boy Twiz, and welcome to Five Minutes of Twisdom. Five minutes of tips and tricks to help grow your music brand. And today's episode is inspired by a recent Facebook post that got me in a lot of trouble of uh, being really critical on Beyonce's verse on the new Megan Thee Stallion Savage remix. Yeah, I was saying that Beyonce's verse really didn't sound convincing to me. It sounded like somebody else wrote that track and it really didn't flow naturally to me. I really felt like she didn't own that part. And, and particularly, I don't think that's Beyonce's style, but I mean, she did it. It is what it is. Internet went crazy, but just me, Knowing me and doing music, I really it really didn't resonate with me too well. And the Beehive really came for your boy in the comments saying, how could you possibly say that? Beyonce writes all her music. She is the queen. Why are you disrespecting her legacy by saying something like that? Now, pump your brakes. I'm not saying that her legacy and she's not talented, all right? I simply was just saying that the delivery that she had for that verse sounded like it was somebody else who wrote it because it didn't sound natural. And if you're in the music industry, you understand how that works. But it also allowed me to get an opportunity to break down a little bit of the behind the scenes of what goes on in the music industry. So on this episode, we're gonna talk about the truth about royalties. Now, before we get into the breakdown of how to split your royalties, you gotta understand what is royalties. And royalties is basically the process of how you get paid for your music. That's right, it's more to it than just uploading your music on any of your distribution sites and having it getting sold on Spotify and iTunes and all that. That's just a portion of it. And if you haven't watched my video on how to collect all your royalties, make sure you click that link above and make sure you check out how to collect all your royalties from every single platform, from every single way to make sure you get your money. One of the main steps for you to be able to collect your money is to make sure your music is registered with a pro. That's right, ASCAP BMI. I'm pretty sure you heard of them. Well, what do these companies do? These are the companies that helps you collect your royalties from things like spins on the radio, maybe in a restaurant they're spinning your, mu your music. If you go to a concert that is uh, ASCAP or BMI certified, they're able to do it. TV shows, uh, movies, all those different ways that's not streaming is how you get your royalties collected. Now, the part that you've been waiting for, how do you break down those royalties? Well, generally, royalties are broken down into a 100%. All right, so the 100% represents a 50% share and another 50% share. And those 50% shares are your writers and your publishers. And the writer's percentage share is anybody who has anything to do with the project. So it doesn't necessarily mean you actually wrote the song, but it could be a producer, it could be an audio engineer, it could be somebody who actually wrote the song, it could be somebody who sing it, rap it, ad lib, yell, talked at the beginning of the song. Anybody who has anything to do with that product. So yes, it says writers, I get it, kind of contradicting, but all it is is basically if you worked on that project, you get a percentage in the writer's share. In the publisher's percentage, it's basically who is in charge of that song. So if you're assigned to a label, guess what? Your label's in charge of that song. So they get the publishing on your, on your royalties on that one. If you're independent, well, guess what? You own everything. You're responsible for your song. So that's why you see a lot of your favorite artists, while they may control the writer's portion of it, they have to give up their royalties in the publishing. And if you paid attention to my video on Megan Thee Stallion and how her deal was set up, she really didn't have a lot of the publishing. That publishing is really, really the ownership of your music. Like they, even though you create it, you don't have ownership because they're in charge of your music. That's why you see a lot of artists sticking to be independent because they want sole control of their music. Um, whereas to, if you were to label, you really don't have ownership of your music. And sometimes they can buy out their publishing rights to own their music. And sometimes that can take a while because the amount of money that's going from the label to make sure they produce your music, pay your studio costs, um, shoot your videos, have you go on different places, promote your music marketing. By the time that fee adds up, it costs a lot to buy back. That's why it's rare 
you see a lot of it's rare to see a lot of artists buy back their publishing a lot of artists are suffering right now during a time where they can't travel because they only get their real money off of the shows that they got you really don't get paid a lot just from the streams it takes for you to get like almost like a million streams just for you to get a substantial amount of money so i mentioned a little earlier that bmi does 200 percentile it's essentially the same thing but they just break it down a little different so you can understand it a little bit better so they have 100 percent in writing and then have 100 percent in publishing so let me break that down a little bit for you so say for instance you did a song it's four people on a song in your writers and your writers percentage you split it up equally if you want to just to keep it simple you get 25 you get 25 you get 25 and you get 25 and that takes up the whole uh, writing share and then you got your hundred for your publishing now if Say for instance, you're with a label, your label will probably get that whole 100%. Um, some labels are actually artist friendly a little bit, so you may get a little percentage of that. So say for instance, the publishing of your uh, label, they may get 50% and then you and the four artists may split that 50%, whatever they may look like. Now, a lot of people are wondering, what kind of percent do should I give my producer? What kind of percentage should I give this? It's really no law or no rule to say how much percentage you're supposed to give somebody. To be honest, just try to be fair with the amount of work somebody done. So if somebody does a lot more on the song, like they did a hook and a verse compared to just a verse, they should probably get a little bit more um, in the percentage just because they did more work. When you, It's just like you getting paid. If you didn't do as much work as the next person, you're gonna wanna get paid a little bit more, right? That's just common sense. But in this field, you want to make sure everybody who's a part of the project eats. If you look up a lot of your favorite major songs that's out right now, there's so many people involved on these projects that the royalties are split so many different ways. If you look at this example right here, you can see that there's so many people on the writer's side. Who knew that there were so many people involved in these tracks to get them to sound good? So it just shows you that it is a major team that's behind the scenes pushing this music, getting it to where it needs to be. Be. Now artists, while I know you feel like you're doing majority of the work, I wrote the song, I basically made it a hit. All I did was rap on the beat. Show some love to your producers, okay? Because without the beat, you wouldn't have a dope sound for you to rap on. You wouldn't have a dope track that's really gonna carry you to the next level, you know? It's all in harmony. Because a lot of times you see artists out there that, hey, I paid the producer, they gave me the beat, that's it. They did their service and that's it. Nah, man, you know, if a song makes it to the next level, you wanna take your producer with you because you want that person to make more and more hits and you want that person to eat too. Just like as in producers, if you are basically creating projects so artists can get on and stuff like that, don't rape them. You know what I'm saying? Don't 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 rape them to where they're getting a little bit of percentage because you mixed it and mastered and stuff like that. I get it because I do that a lot too. I do a lot on the song. I produce it, I mix it, I master it. You know, I promote it and stuff like that. Of course, I'm gonna wanna be, get a bigger share, but you wanna make sure that they eat too. A main thing you wanna have when all of this is said and done is a split sheet. And all a split sheet is, is basically it discusses what percentage everyone gets. You wanna make sure each artist gets their fair share and everybody's in agreement on what percentage everyone gets. There's too many artists out there that don't read their contracts, they don't read the percentages, and they have to rework their deal because they're not getting the major cut from their music because they don't understand how the percentages work, they don't understand how the contracts work, and basically, these labels and other major companies are eating off these artists and all they're reduced to is just a little bit of song streaming and show money. So you wanna make sure you have ownership of not all your music, but a good portion of your music, so that way you can get all of your royalties coming in. And that's been another episode of Five Minutes of Twisdom. Thank you guys so much for watching this episode. I hope you got some gems so that way you can take with you, collect all your royalties, bro. Get paid, bro. That's what this is for, man. Get paid. You're doing music because you love it and you wanna get paid. Make sure you hit, like, comment if you have, any questions on royalties, share this with somebody that if you think they need it or if you're just sharing it just to share the information to somebody else, please do that. I do this for you guys because without you, there's no me. And this is why I do this. It's another episode of 5 Minutes of Twisdom. It's your boy Twiz and I'm out. Certified.